Hi, babes. Welcome to the Chase Life with Kelly podcast. I am your host, Kelly Chase. We are going to dive into money mindset today. I feel like it is one of the one of the concepts that I have studied over the last five or six years that has absolutely transformed my life. Absolutely transformed my life. Um, didn't really know about money mindset until money mindset was a part of a lesson that I was studying from a my first mindset coach, Erin Nicole Porter. I will forever be grateful for her for introducing all of the things to me. Um, so with that said, I want to introduce it to you. Maybe you are already at a level of like you've been studying money mindset for a while, or maybe you're at a level that you could use more um, mindset, inner healing, letting go of the limiting beliefs, some subconscious reprogramming around money and abundance and wealth and all of that. Or this is completely foreign to you and you're like, money mindset, what is that? So I'm going to dive into it today. Um, First, before I present, because I am going to do a presentation because I feel like it's going to be great, a great visual for you to to look at, especially if you were tuning in through YouTube. Um, otherwise, if you're just listening to this episode, it'll be fine. You don't need the, uh, the visual, but if you want to go back after you listen to this episode and check out YouTube and see the actual visual, I think it will be extremely helpful for you, especially when I start talking about the reprogramming of the subconscious mind. Uh, so, First and foremost, I am going to share a little story about how I got started with money mindset altogether. I was at a TJ Maxx here in Buckhead, and I had probably a few months, maybe six months after resigning from one of my corporate positions. Um, I was health coaching full time and I was like I was a trainer for an all audio based fitness app at the time. So. It was my first time as an entrepreneur. <laughs> like I like I always when I first got certified as a coach was in 2013 and I continued to work until 2017. So for four years, I was actually running that business as a side hustle in addition to my corporate job and other things that I was doing to make money because that's what we do when we don't have when we're not in alignment, when we don't know our purpose, when we don't know what we're super passionate about we have a tendency to kind of like burn the candle at both ends. um, And we're doing things that just to make a paycheck, really. Um, And sometimes it's, you know, oh, my friends work there. So that's why I'm staying. Um, But once you start to learn this information and start to take your power back and step into your power, life becomes different. Life becomes so much easier and better. Um, And I say easier, not because you're not presented with challenges or hardships. You are, oh my God, I am presented with all the challenges and hardships. However, I look at things differently because of the mindset work that I have done over the last six years. There is a shift, a complete shift that has happened from my perspective. Do I allow myself to get angry and sad and disappointed and feel the guilt and the shame? Absolutely. Um, And I get sad sometimes. I get depressed. I can use that word freely because I have. Um, But again, I know I have tools to be able to say like, hey, well, this is happening for me. There's a lesson in this. So there's a gift in all of this. And that's what I want to help you all to understand is that you can take your power back. It's all about the like your your power. And, and the first thing to getting your power back, whether it's in, like it's relationships regardless, but you know, relationship to money, relationship to another human, relationship to your career, your business, your job, all the things. Um, but the first step is choosing. You have to decide, do it do I want to continue to stay stuck and and hinder myself or do I want to decide and make a choice to change my life? Two choices. That's it. It's a yes or no. Do you want to or not? Do you want to stay stuck? Do you want to fly? Do you want, you know? So with that being said, this information was brought to me and it's a fuck yes. Like, heck yes. As soon as I started listening, like learning about money mindset, like I said, my life decided, just like started to change. So I was out at TJ Maxx and again, six months out from my corporate job. And I was like looking at shirts or whatever. I was just down like the shirt aisle and this woman approaches me. And honestly, I have been approached by a network marketing, uh, like Mary Kay consultant before in a Home Depot. And um, which I was like, that was actually really, that was great that you just went to a Home Depot to like find your clients. Um, But with that being said, this woman 
was like, I feel like I have an opportunity for you. And she was being very vague, but something was pulling me. And and some of y'all may have been skeptical and you may have been like, this is sketchy as shit. I'm not going to talk to this woman. She was like, I have this opportunity. My husband and I are, are, have, have this opportunity. Um, would it be okay if we shared about this opportunity with you? And I didn't think that it was like a swinger or thing or anything like that. Like, I'm, granted, this was like six, seven years ago. So I don't recall exactly the conversation, but it didn't make me feel scared or fearful. Um, or again, like, what in the world? This is crazy. Um, so I know she said something about business and they've made, you know, X amount of money and blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Again, I was just like, open. Something was opened for me. And maybe it's because I had started doing the personal development. I was starting to read all the books and all that. So I think it was just open for an opportunity. So they asked me to go meet them at a public space at a Starbucks. Um, and I did. So went and met them at a coffee shop and they presented this opportunity for me. It was like network marketing in a sense. And so I was like, well, I'm familiar with that you know, uh, method, that model, that business model. And anyways, they were just showing that to me and they were like, but first off, you have to get, like, you really have to start doing this personal development work and you really got to get your mind around money in a different way. And I was like, okay. So they literally gave me this book. It was called the business of the 21st century. I know it's backwards if you're looking at it. Uh, <laughs> maybe I think, um, but it is by the author, Robert, Kiyosaki. So the business of the 21st century by Robert Kiyosaki, who wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, if you have heard of that book or if you've read it, um, the business of the 21st century is my first money mindset book. So I decided to dive in and look, I mean, you can see I highlighted important information, all the things. Um, they gave me two days to read this. It's not that big of a book, but I'm not a reader. Like I wasn't at the time. So it's like a little over a hundred pages, but I was not a reader at the time. This is literally when I just started my personal development journey and well, I guess I was six months in. So I was maybe like listening to some audio books, maybe read a couple of personal development books, but like to give me a time limit and say, you have two days to read this. I was like, oh my God, it's taking me like two months to read a hundred, a hundred page book. So I did it though. I would stay up and I would read and I would highlight and I would take notes and all the things and holy shit, it changed my perspective. Um, let me see if I can actually, there's, there's basically like four different quadrants to the money mindset. Um, so we have, Ooh, yes, yes, yes. It's E B S N I E as in Edward B as in boy S as in Sam I as in investments, <laughs> but what it actually stands for E is employee S self-employed or small business owner B business owner I investor. So just by that, where are you at? Are you an employee? Are you self-employed or a small business owner? You could be a little bit of both employee and a small business owner. Like I said, that's how I was. Got my certification, you know, launched my LLC in 2013 for Chase Life with Kelly and our uh, Chase Life with Together, technically it's my business name. But um, but I was working for someone, so I was an employee and I was a small business owner. Or are you a business owner, straight up business owner? You got a pretty lucrative thing going. Um, you're making the money as a business owner. Or are you an investor? What we want to do is go from the E quadrant, from employee, wherever you're at, to the I quadrant, which is investor. So you all know that I had uh, Elizabeth Ralph on, Ralph on the podcast recently who is, quote unquote, the spiritual investor. And I hope that you found some value in that um, because she merges the mindset and the strategy behind investing. So here we are six years later and Kelly is now just getting into the investor phase, but I understood it. It helps like this book helped me shift at least my mindset around where I needed to be, where I wanted to be. And I am highly, like, I highly encourage anybody, especially in today's society. Like, why would you only stay as an employee? Like, I get it. You may love your job, but God, you have so much more potential than working under someone. Um, you could be self-employed or a small, or maybe not even, maybe you continue to build that career, right? You love 
the position that you have. You keep growing in the company. You are a fucking boss bitch, like boss babe, whatever. Like you love it. But you know, there's a little bit more. Like maybe you don't want to have to ask for PTO. Maybe you don't want to have like limited vacation time. Maybe you don't want to have to like manage a team of people in the way that you're managing a team of people. Maybe, you know, there's someone at your firm, at your place of work that you just don't get along with. Why would you subject yourself to toxic relationships every single day that you have to go into an office? Maybe you work remote. That's a beautiful thing. Um, it could be if you enjoy working remote. Um, it may be isolating too. So you have to really understand what do you want? What like what do you want in this life? Because you get one of them. We, we only have one. I mean, you may come back as a bird later or you may come back as this like boss, female empowered, whatever later on. But you may not you know, you're not going to remember. So unless you do whatever, I don't even know. I was going to go in like a whole down a rabbit hole of like, maybe you do like family ancestry work or something, but regardless, back to money mindset. Here we are. Now we're learning about investing with Elizabeth Ralph. And I am going to be sharing some of my journey around that. Um, a lot of the concepts, especially around money mindset, because I have studied money mindset, it's a part of my course. The goddess magic course is money mindset. Um, and of course, right now, what we're doing is money mindset. I'm going to take you on a journey with that. Um, but so a lot of the prints, some of the principles in Elizabeth's spiritual investor program is what I have already learned. However, it is reiterating and I'm learning even more because it's expanding my mind to another level. So the thing about subconscious reprogramming is that it's actually changing the neuro pathways in your mind. It's changing your cells. It's changing your neuro pathways. And therefore it's expanding what you can hold, what you can like the perspectives that you have. Um, it is expanding your thought process. It's, it's giving you more abundance versus when you don't, and you have like one way of thinking about everything. You're very lack or very scarcity. I recognize that sometimes I am in a very, in a victim mindset, and I don't love that about myself. So it's something that I'm aware of. And that's the key to change is that we're aware. So now I'm going to give you some information about um, how you can start to change that yourself, like how you can start to shift your money mindset. And the first thing is awareness. So if, if this episode does anything for you, I hope that it just gives you awareness around the thoughts the feelings, the behaviors that you have around money wealth, being rich, um, being poor, uh, what that lack and scarcity feels like, what abundance actually means to you, what success actually means to you. Um, and if you would like, pick up this book, The Business of the 21st Century. I will link, I'll have um, MJ, my amazing teammate, um, put this all in the show notes or, um, or Justine. We'll get one of them to do that. Okay. Now, second book that I read, I think I did this in the right order, was actually Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I was like, okay, wait, Robert Kiyosaki heard this book. Yep, kind of thick. Um, I remember reading this on a plane to California in April of 2018. Highlighted parts of this book as well. Um, it just further expands on the business of the 21st century. I believe Robert Kiyosaki books are wonderful. The next book I read was The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. This book is absolutely profound as well. Um, I think if you are a, if you're a follower of Catherine Zenkina from Manifestation Babe, I believe that this is a book that she says, like she raves about as well. Um, but this is Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker. It'll change your life also. So good. It's just so fucking good. Like I want to go back and like you know, like, let's put this, consider awareness. <laughs> um, awareness, like I said, key to change. Consider a specific emotional incident you experienced around money when you were young. Understanding, write down how this incident, how this incident may have affected your current financial life. Dissociation, can you see this way of being is only what you learned and isn't you? Yeah, it isn't you. Can you see that you have a choice in the present moment to be different? Declaration, place your hand on your heart and say, 
I release my non-supportive money experiences from the past and create new and rich future. Touch your head and say, I have a millionaire mind. Because guess what you do? You are so meant for money. You're so meant for to live a successful, prosperous life. And no wonder I had a bookmark on that page. Because <laughs> I haven't read this book in probably six years. Um, because then there was this book, Rich as Fuck by Amanda Francis. Um, I had Amanda on my podcast two years ago. Um, you can go back and listen to that episode. Um, I think it was maybe my most viewed episode. It was fucking amazing. She's, she is so, she has so much conviction. Um, and it was just profound. This also, like it literally, like all these books combined, it's going to change your neural pathways. It's neuroscience. Like it is literally going to expand you, evolve you and elevate you into this next level version of a human that you've never been. Even if you think that you like, even if you are a multimillionaire right now, there are a lot of people. It doesn't matter if you have one dollar or two million dollars or fifty million dollars. You could still have a lack mindset. You could still be affected by your money stories. So it doesn't matter where you're at. This will help you. Okay, and then I, 2018, 19. Um, as I'm learning all this stuff, shifting my mindset around money, I also was in debt. <laughs> so with that being said, I was. Um, encouraged to read Dave Ramsey's book, The Total Money Makeover. Uh, basically with this, it was just helping me to prioritize what to pay first. It, they, he, uh, his approach is like the snowball effect and it's a snowball effect. So you take, I believe like your smallest, well, now I can't quote it, but anyways, <laughs> cause I'm like, wait, what is it again? But let's say it's this way that you take like you know, let's say you have a $200 credit card, you know, to pay off, but you have a $5,000 one and then you have, you owe, you know, your friend $50. Go ahead and pay your friend off the $50. Scratch it off your list. Don't owe that anymore. Go to the 200. Scratch that off your list. Go to the next thing. Scratch it off so that you can kind of just get rid of the small things. Because at times I think what people do that, that is what it is. At times what people do is that they look at the big picture and they're like, oh my God, I have to pay this off. But, you know, but I also have this over here and this, and your friend keeps saying like, hello, are you ever going to pay me back? Are you ever going to pay me back? But you're like trying to chip away at the bigger thing that isn't, that you're in debt for. And also another thing to look at debt with don't look at debt. Don't say debt. Say that that, you know, those were investments that you made. It's all about how you say things. It's all around because when you speak abundance into your mind, when you speak out loud, you hear yourself. Your mind takes that thought and it's like, oh, yeah, that feels good, accepts it, and then it can change your behaviors. Now, if you're constantly saying, I'm in debt, I'm in debt, I owe a bunch of money, my life sucks, what are your behaviors going to look like? You're going to get kind of stuck. You're going to get trapped. You're going to feel imposter syndrome. You're going to feel procrastination. Not to say we don't do that anyways. We all do that. But insecure. We might be insecure or we're going to be extremely anxious about something or extremely avoidant around money, relationships, all of that. So I wanted to share those few books with you because those are were pivotal for my life and my transformation. So with that being said, I'm going to do a presentation for you to help you understand how to shift your money mindset and bring awareness to all the things. Okay. Let's see if I can figure out how to use my computer and we'll be good. Yay. I'm so excited. Um, okay. Now you see it. Here we go. If you are on YouTube, oh my God, I feel so good doing this. <laughs> this is literally like a part of my goddess magic course. So like I'm, I'm yeah. Part of my goddess magic course. So if you go through goddess magic, this will just be reiterated for you um, in so many different ways. So becoming a money magnet with me. Okay. So Kelly Chase, she is an entrepreneur, social influencer, podcast host, speaker, and reality TV star, best known for her role as a castmate on the breakaway, breakaway hit Netflix show, Love is Blind. Sorry, it's dropped off on here. Um, 
I am the founder of the coaching program, Goddess Magic, which combines business strategy and mindset coaching to help women act like the person that they desire to be, improve their confidence and master their so forth. When we do that, we attract limitless opportunities. We grow our business. We grow in our career. We grow in our relationships. We uh, attract opportunities that serve us and are in alignment with our truth and our passion and our purpose. And guess what? We make money doing it because we are so aligned and that's like the attraction magnet of the universe is when you can be you when you are you the you is you you are magnetic to all things my job is to help you understand your mind my mission is to help you create the life you crave i offer teachings to help people better understand their limiting beliefs around love money and success and offer tools to help them reprogram your subconscious mind to in turn create different behaviors giving you results that you actually are craving okay so focusing on your money mindset awareness to your beliefs and stories relationship behaviors so first of all focus when you focus on your money mindset you're going to have awareness to your beliefs and behaviors second you're going to recognize your relationship behaviors relationship to money but also it does transfer into other areas of your life. Stay, hold, spend, and receive. Money dates, gratitude and celebration, elevate into overflow, guided abundance affirmation to reprogram the subconscious mind. All right. So this is what I really want to show you. Okay. I hate that it's like cutting off the right hand side. Why is that doing that? We do not know. Okay. So um, yeah, if you're on, if you're listening through just a uh, podcast streaming platform and not looking at this on YouTube, then you're gonna be like, Kelly, what are you talking about? But it's, I'm trying to share my, I am sharing my screen on zoom and it's having technical difficulties, but regardless, I'm like, it looks better. It looks better this way though. I don't want to like not have it. You know what? Perfectionism. We don't give a shit. Okay. So first let's talk about the mind. This is by far the biggest thing that you need to be aware of, okay? This this diagram right here, and you can take a, a picture, you can take a screenshot of this. This picture is going to change your life. If you can live by this picture, so much will be different for you. Okay, so on the left-hand side, this, well, let me, let me say this. What, what is this? So this is an image of our mind. Our mind is in every cell of our body. When when I ask you what, you know, what is the color of your car, you can say it. You have an image, you know what it looks like. But if I ask you what is what is what does the mind look like, you're going to probably tell me it's the brain. You're going to be like, "Well, it's the brain, it's in the head." But actually, it's not. The mind is in every cell of your body. So there are billions and billions of cells in your body, right? So with that, if every cell has a mind, that means you are so intelligent, okay? That is why, you know, when you hear people say like the body is so intelligent, it can heal things. Like your body has the intelligence to heal itself because it's so fucking true. This is why, because you have a mind in every cell of your body. Okay, so we have a conscious mind subconscious mind and the body. This is the emotional body. It doesn't mean necessarily your body, but if you want to think about it this way, you can. So the top half of the mind is the conscious mind. The second, the other half is the subconscious mind. When you, you know how they say that kids soak up things like a sponge. So this is why. Between the ages of zero and seven to eight years old, you do not have a conscious mind. So that top layer that top part of your mind is not there. It's only subconscious and body. So that's why it is easy to learn your ABCs, how to say cat, dog, mom, ball, because it's through constant repetition that you are learning. The subconscious mind is wide open. With the subconscious mind being wide open, it just accepts every single thought that's coming in. Again, you're learning. You have no idea about anything else because you don't have a conscious mind. After around seven or eight, nine years old, you start to develop. That conscious mind starts to fully develop. That's why they say, you know, teenagers are such terrible, so terrible, can be so terrible because we actually start having a conscious mind. So we start giving pushback to our parents and we're like, no, because you're like, I can think my own self for myself. You can accept or reject a thought. 
So with that said, we have two ways of learning. Like I just said, through constant repetition and through sudden impact, that sudden impact can either be a very positive thing like winning the lottery or winning an award with work, or it can be a not so great thing like abuse, uh, getting into an accident, um, anything like that, right? Getting robbed, getting kidnapped, like most terrible, losing your job, uh, getting a divorce, like going through a divorce, um, losing a life, grief, all of that, right? So with that being said, we have that sudden impact and we have constant repetition. It doesn't change as we get older. We're still learning through constant repetition, however, in sudden impact. However, if you, when you were five years old, for the first time, you heard your parent say, what are you doing? That's like, what's wrong with you? You're a it's not that your parents are trying to be mean and they're like telling you that you're, there's something wrong with you. They're literally just asking you what's wrong with you because that's how they were programmed. They were raised to speak like that. Um, so, but what the subconscious mind does, it takes, okay, something's wrong with me. And then they become insecure. Their behaviors could be different. It could be that they're extremely insecure. They're very closed off. They're really shy. It could be that they're extremely like the class clown. They need attention because mom and dad don't love me. Everybody is different on how their emotional body projects this behavior. Okay. So how does this pertain to money? Well, same freaking thing. Over time, let's say you're younger and your parents said, we can't buy that. We can't afford that. So your entire life, you're kind of living in lack because we can't afford that. We can't afford that. That's just enough. Um, it's too expensive. We're not rich. What do you think? Money grows on trees. These are all limiting belief because yes, in fact, money does grow on trees. It's made of paper and paper is made of trees. And there's a gajillion of those. So yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> debunk, debunk that limiting belief right there. So with that being said, on the second half, um, if you're looking at YouTube again, energy is, oh, okay, let's, let's back up. So your conscious mind can accept or reject a thought. Your subconscious mind only has the ability to accept a thought. So again, between the ages of zero to like six, seven, eight, nine, your subconscious mind is wide open. It's accepting every thought. As you grow older, you have the conscious mind. You can accept or decline a thought, reject a thought. So then your energy is, you choose your thoughts. That's your intellectual mind. Your conscious mind is your intellectual mind. So if something was said and you're like, no, that's not right, you can reject that thought. It does not have to go in you. But if someone says something and it just, it lands, like you accept, that's your emotional mind. So your thoughts cause your feelings. So as soon as you, your energy is, meaning positive or negative, as soon as you accept that thought, whether it is negative or positive, those thoughts cause your feelings. So that is your emotional mind. Your subconscious mind is your emotional mind. Your thoughts cause your feelings. So again, the thought is something's wrong with me. It causes a feeling of in, insecurity, um, shame, disappointment, sadness, all of that. Then that causes your action. So you have your thoughts create your feelings. Your feelings create your actions. And your actions create your results or your reactions. So you, you're reacting to the actions that are caused by your feelings, which are created by your thoughts. So around your money beliefs, this is very important. So if you're constantly thinking, I can't afford this, it's too expensive. Or if you're constantly thinking about talking about money, like in the sense of it, yeah, I got this for like $2. It was only $2. It was $19. It was 20 bucks. When you have total financial freedom, you're not worrying about the $5 bargain that you got at Walgreens. Like it doesn't matter because money is like the sky is blue. I'm not walking around every day saying the sky is blue. The sky is blue. The sky is blue. Everyone, the sky is blue because it's just a part of you. It's just a part of life. Like we know the sky is blue, right? So money needs to be neutral as well. Okay. 
So I hope that was explained. Um, so awareness to beliefs and stories. This is what we need to go into next. Um, and I, I just don't want, I don't love the fact that this thing keeps cutting me off. So I, I am just gonna, whatever. Okay. This one actually is working. Okay. Awareness to your beliefs and stories. What do you currently believe to be true about money? So you need to ask yourself these questions. Um, if you're driving in a car right now, just contemplate on these on the answers to these questions. If you are listening to this while you're vacuuming, great. When you get done vacuuming, take a sit second and like go back through this episode and ask yourself these questions. Because these questions are giving you awareness to your beliefs and your stories around money and success. And with that awareness, you have the power to rewrite your story and expand, change your neuro, neuro pathways. So one, what do you currently believe to be true about money? How do you define success? Your, the way your definition of success is going to be different than your neighbors and your husbands and your wives and, every, and your sister and your brother. What stories, what stories were you told? Did you hear? Did you see? And create around the words wealthy and being rich. Do you believe you're worthy of success? And again, is that success the definition of the success that you just shared or thought of? Or is that you're worthy of success a definition that you think you should have, should be? Do you believe you're worthy of being wildly wealthy? If no, why not? Who told you that? What fears do you have around money? Okay, so relationship behaviors. The, if you are familiar with uh, the attachment styles of like intimate relationships, this is the exact same thing. Again, everything is a relationship. You have a relationship with your career, your business, your job, your TV set, your couch, everything you have a relationship with. So there's either anxious, avoidant, or secure. We want to have a secure relationship with money. I will be first and foremost to say, although I have been doing this work for a long time, I'm still not 100% secure with my money. And that re reflects in other areas of my life <laughs> because I am not totally 100% secure with relationships either. So we still work in progress, but I have the awareness. So stay. Can money stay? Do you fear that money will leave or do you trust that it will stay? Do you fear that money will leave or do you trust that it will stay? Hold. How do you hold on to money? Do you hoard it all in savings for a rainy day? Or do you hold it for just a moment before getting rid of it and fear you'll do something bad with it if you have it for too long? Spend. How do you spend money? Do you freely give it away or do you have a tight grip and fear of letting it go? Now with this, I'm going to show you something. Okay, see my hand? You can't get through there. That little hole, this hole can't get through there. Maybe water or something can go through there, but you can't. Because you can't get in there. So with this, my mentor, Erin, showed me one time. She was like, this is you with money. This is you with relationships. Sometimes there's so much control Control. I'm going to repeat that again. Control. Because control, we need to release. We need to release control. In order for things to flow, they, we need to release the control. We need to release the grip. So what happens when we release the grip? There's a hole. There's area. There's room. There's space for things to flow. There is space for things to flow. Now it's wide open. You've surrendered. You can like you are a conduit for money. You're just letting things flow all the live long day. Isn't that amazing? Think about it that way. Next step. Okay, receive. How you receive a compliment says a lot about how you receive money. Do you deflect it? Do you reject it or accept it? So let's say someone tries to tell you, oh my God, you look so pretty today. And you're like, this whole thing? Or, oh my God, no. That's deflecting and, and rejecting. Or deflecting could be like, oh gosh, oh, thank you. You are too. You're immediately like putting it back on them. Can you not just say thank you? Thank you. That was so kind of you to say. Um, with money, someone wants to pay for you. I don't mean necessarily mean like a date. Like I'll say you go out with some friends and you're like, oh my God, Kelly, I got this today. And you're like, oh my God, no, 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 no. You don't have to do that. I mean, that's nice to like give the pushback or whatever, but like also you can accept it. That's okay. You can say thank you. 
So there are just some questions to think about. Just some questions to think about. Okay, this is a concept that was brought to me by Erin. It's money dates. Um, I have on my calendar um, the 15th, like literally in my phone, the calendar, and I get notified that uh, it's time to like look at my bank account, transfer money, do whatever I need to do and have a money date on the 15th and the 30th of every month. Some people do like the 10th and the 25th, I think. You can pick whichever, but generally, genuinely speaking, we get, you know, every two weeks, I guess, paid, whatever. So I changed mine to like the 15th and the 30th, I believe. Um, but with that being said, you need access to your bank account, some like vibey tunes, candles, essential oils, your your wallet, your purse, um, and an open mind. So what is a money date? Um, it's where you look. Oh, 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 hold on. Um, what is a money date? It's where you literally offer, you're offering gratitude for money out of your bank account, just as much as you do for money received. It creates a different feeling around spending, giving, investing, donating, and releasing money. The more grateful, the higher the vibration, attracting more of what we want. You're literally sitting in front of your computer or your phone or whatever, looking at your bank account and just sending it money. I mean, not sending it money, sending it love, sending it thanks. Like your your power bill came in and you're like, oh my God, it's $10 higher than last month. Well, guess what? Maybe it was really hot and it was summertime and there were people on the other end of that power company that are working tirelessly at 3 a.m. trying to fix things, make your air condition work better um, and all that. And so you just give it thanks, something you can't control, right? Give it thanks. Think about it in that way. There are some people on the other end of those bills that are doing a hard job you know, maybe you're the like, uh, what is it? The transmitter, transformer, <laughs> what is it called? The transformer blows or it is an ice storm, a snowstorm comes through the whole city. The power is out, but there are electric electricians going away from their families, risking their lives to drive, to get to these power outages and to make sure that your power turns back on. That's what you're paying for. Be grateful for it. Because every single time that we're like, uh, 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 around money and having that tight grip, or you're at a restaurant and a bill comes and it's like $50 more expensive, or it's like you guys all do like, what is it? You all decide to split the bill and you weren't expecting to split the bill. And you're like, fuck. Um, that has happened to me many times, you know? And you're like, I just got a salad and everyone else got steaks and lobster and Ugh. And you know what? I think it is essential for you to speak up and advocate and be like, guys, I'm sorry. I'm not in a best place. Like, like my financial, like, you know, where I'm at right now financially, I'm just not able to do this. Can I just pay for my salad? Great. You know, but you got to advocate. That's, that's being in your power as well and using your voice. Um, other times, you know, again, if that bill comes in, it's higher and it, it's like, you can feel that usually in your gut because, again, it's your emotional body. It's your second brain um, where you're like, oh, that's where a lot of your emotions are stored actually in your physical body, in your gut. Um, OK, so the next thing is celebration. Celebrate both big wins and small wins as well as losses or excuse me. Celebrate both big and small wins as well as losses. Celebrating the wins sends us a signal to the sends a signal to the universe that we like this. Send us more of this. Celebrating the losses shows the universe that you are grateful for the challenges, for the challenging times, and you're learning the lessons and that you will try something different next time. It's all about awareness. So thank you, God, for, you know, or whatever. Thank you, universe, um, for... The fact that I just lost my job, I'm going to be, oh my God, like, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to support my family? How am I going to do all of it? As soon as you can shift that to gratitude, the better you're going to be. Something, it, it, there's a reason why that's happening. There's some other opportunity out there that is going to be so phenomenal for you. Or there's a bit, or there's a stepping stone that's going to get you to the, your next level. Be grateful, everything. So elevate into overflow. How do we elevate into overflow? Guided abundance affirmations to reprogram the subconscious mind. Let's first understand how and why affirmations are so powerful. Think about this. Your current reality is a manifestation of your past thoughts. 
read that again or listen to this again. Your current reality is a manifestation of your past thoughts. Your current reality is a manifestation of your past thoughts. So if you're constantly thinking negative thoughts and you look at your reality and you're not making enough money, quote unquote, you're in a toxic relationship, blah, 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 blah. What about these previous thoughts, these past thoughts have created that scenario? Thing is, in order to start seeing different results, we have to start thinking, speaking, and feeling differently about money and everything in life. As we impress new ideas on the subconscious mind, the more lack-minded, negative, scarcity, fear-based thoughts will be weakened, and the more abundant, positive, more than enough, love-based thoughts will overpower, creating new feelings and new results. Remember, subconscious mind, wide open, conscious. So now, because we do have a conscious mind, we have to accept different thoughts. We have to rewrite rewrite, and rewire our programming. Um, I also would say that through, um, well, what we'll get into in a second, but a lot of this also, it's not just thinking your way into different results. It's also changing the uh, physiology of your body. That's why, you know, I've had all of these somatic therapist, somatic specialist on the podcast to explain that part. Because if you can start to think your way into different results, as well as actually change the physiology of your body somatically, then you're releasing on a somatic level. You're actually changing the trajectory of everything at that point, And it all works simultaneously together. And you were just going to keep elevating and expanding and you're going to step into these next level versions of yourself. And you're like, you'll look back in two years from now or six months from now or five years from now, 20 years from now and be like, I don't even recognize that girl, but God, thank God for her. Thank God I went through all that stuff. So it's impressing new ideas on the subconscious mind. Affirmations to reprogram the subconscious mind. I am so happy and grateful now that these are, okay, so that line right there came from this book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, um, as well as, um, I want to say, uh, Rich as Fuck 2, and also Programs Thinking into Results program that I went through with, um, it was a Bob Proctor consultant, Madison Rose Del Masso, who y'all know that I've spoken about as well. Uh, she's one of my mentors, and she's incredible as well, so there was a time that I wrote this statement out a hundred or close to a hundred times a day for weeks. <laughs> and it does help. It will. It starts over time to shift again, thoughts. If, if we're constantly impressing new ideas, new positive things, thoughts onto the subconscious mind, there is no room to think anything else. You understand that? We're actually literally crowding out the negative by putting in the positive. So I am so happy and grateful now that I am easily and effortlessly earning an excess of, let's say, $30,000 each month through multiple sources on a continuous basis. Some of y'all, if you just eye rolled or if you just felt something in your body, be like that, like you, your body just had this visceral reaction of like, nope, that was a body. No, um, that means we got some work to do because you are worthy of $30,000 Every, every month. I know women that make millions of dollars a month. <laughs> no, I'm not there yet, you know, but at every level, it's different. So and I'm sure you've heard that you're like with inner child healing and all of that, you're actually like peeling back the layers of an onion. And once you get, so it's the same thing with all of this. Like once you uncover one set of, of limiting beliefs, you're going to be met with another set of limiting beliefs. So you could be making $30,000 a year, but you're like, oh shit, how do I even make $50,000 a year? I don't even know what that looks like. I don't even know how I can. I feel like I'm stuck. It's because something inside of you is stuck. It's saying, okay, maybe you're getting too successful that you're going to lose something. That's a big fear. That's a really, really big fear is people actually having more success of their partner, um, their friends, family, people being jealous of them, people being... And, and oftentimes it's usually like you think you think that they think something about you kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so anyways, all that being said, you are worthy of it. I am a wealthy woman or man. Money is always on its way to me. I am in constant overflow. 
I love and trust money and money loves and trusts me. So you say, I am so happy and grateful now that I am a wealthy woman. I am so happy and grateful now that I that money is always on its way to me. I am in constant overflow. I am so happy and grateful that now that money fully supports me. I am fully supported. I am so happy and grateful now that the more money I earn, the more money I earn. I'm so happy and grateful now that everything is working out for me. Everything is unfolding exactly as it's supposed to. I am so happy and grateful now that it feels so good to have money, receive money, and spend money. I love releasing money. I trust it's always on its way to me. Obviously, there are so many more affirmations. So many more affirmations. I love being a fucking millionaire. I I am a millionaire. Um, One of... I'll show you. This is something that I have literally written. It was from Catherine Zinkina. It says, every move I make is making me a millionaire. Every move I make is making me a millionaire. Oftentimes, if we, if we aren't moving, if we aren't creating, how can we create space for more money to come in? If we aren't moving, dating in the dating world or something, how can we learn how can we learn what we like how can we learn what we don't like if we're just sitting there and not doing anything sitting on our couch expecting mr right to walk in the door it's not gonna work okay so elevate into overflow manifestation techniques what does that look like um journaling like i said i wrote out like a hundred times a day those powerful affirmations i'm so happy and grateful even if you picked one and just wrote it over and over and over again i'm so happy like this I'm so happy and grateful now that I am easily and effortlessly earning in excess of $50,000 each month through multiple sources on a continuous basis. What that does also is expand the mind to think differently because again, you're, and then you will create different behaviors. That That is the whole purpose of this. Okay. So $50,000 each month may sound completely crazy because you may only be making $2,000 each month right now. And you're like, there's no fucking way that I'm going to be doing $50,000 a month. Well, there's a limiting belief right there. That right there is stopping you. So with that being said, over time, maybe you take it to like $10,000 each month. Maybe you start smaller with something that could be a little bit more realistic feeling. And then once you get that 10K or you get closer, maybe you start making $5,000 a month. You're like, hmm, I wonder if I start making $15,000 or $20,000 a month. Over time, you're, you will be uh, gifted with different ideas on how to earn money, how to make money. Again, we are going to, though, try to go from like employee, self-employed, small business owner, business owner to an investor, because then when you're investing, you're actually creating wealth, especially that's what, you know, Elizabeth Ralph just noted in the podcast episode a few weeks before that investing is where it's at, because then your money is just making money for you, period. You don't have to work hard. It's easy and effortless. Every single thing that you write down, every single thing that you think of, every word matters. So please be careful when you're thinking, um, even when you're let's like relate this to health, because I know a lot of women that are listening to this podcast have a, you know, body image relationship issues. I'm fat. I hate the way my body looks. I God, I hate my thighs. I hate my arms. God, you see this jiggle. Oh, gross. Why can't I tighten all of that? That is that is so like we have to stop doing that. We have to stop doing that. We have to be like, God, I love how my arms look. I love the way that I love this little jiggle under my arms because it makes me me, but also I get to exercise and I get to eat healthy. I get to choose different ways of living and eating and moving my body so that I can actually start to feel better about my body. Because I swear, as you do all this stuff, you're just going to feel better about your body. And that's when you like actually start loving yourself more. Everything starts changing, y'all. I don't even know how to explain it, but it does. Okay, so journaling, like I said. You can journal. Um, Manifestation. It's called scripting. You script out what your life, you want your life to look like. You get in it, you feel it, you visualize it, all of that. Spoken rants. Kind of what I just did as far as like saying those things out loud instead of writing them out. Like I, you can write out like a life script. Well, we're going to get to that. Like a life script and you just 
recite out loud, like, oh my God, I love my home. I gosh, my spacious kitchen, my, the, all the daylight in my house, as you guys can see, I don't have much daylight in my condo. So that is something that I love. And it's not coming, it's coming from a present tense. Like I have an abundance of everything. <laughs> when you say it in present tense, you're, you're, your mind doesn't know the difference between the past, present, and future. Remember that. Your mind does not remember the difference between the past, present, and future. So when you start thinking in present tense and you start speaking in present tense, you're actually kind of, you're telling the mind, like, this is happening now. This is happening now. So when you're thinking from that space, that means you have become that person, you have become that person that you have wanted to be. You are becoming that person. You're channeling those present moments as if they are a present moment. And therefore, you can start to think and act like a person you want to be because you are thinking like her. You're like, wow, I have this incredible home. I have this incredible career. Oh, my God, my business is making six figures. Six figures. I'm so fucking grateful. It's so amazing. Oh, my God, I love my life. My boyfriend is incredible. All the things. So when you hear my boyfriend is incredible, but you don't actually have a boyfriend, are you going to accept accept anything less than my boyfriend is incredible when it comes to you? No. <laughs> Woo. And when we do, we learn lessons and those turn into gifts. Okay. Movement. How elevate, how can you elevate into overflow? Uh, one of the manifestation techniques is movement. So moving your body, maybe it's going to a yoga class, maybe it's uh, uh, I don't know, a bar class, it's Pilates, it's going for a walk and you're just moving the energy through your body, dancing, dancing. So good. Visualization, just visualizing. Like I just said that, you know, who you want to be, what you want to call in and it, it already being here, visualizing that money is hitting your bank account. You keep getting like PayPal or Venmo or whatever, just bank account notifications that you just received $5,000. You just received 50 cents. You just received whatever it looks like. And you, that's your thing. Phone reminders. I did this. I actually wound up like taking them off because I put so many reminders on my phone that it was getting annoying to me. And then I was like, ah! and then I had a weird energy around it, but you can do phone reminders, like just $5,000, a million dollars, $20,000, $500,000. And literally that's all you write just $5,000 and you'll get a reminder. And this, it's like a notification link. $5,000 just came in. It gets you comfortable. What's happening is that it gets you comfortable with that amount of money. Because sometimes what happens is, again, I said earlier that you want to get neutral with money, just like the sky is blue. You're neutral about it. So you want to get neutral with money too. So when you're neutral with money, when $5,000 hits your bank account, you're not I mean, yeah, you're going to be appreciative about it. Of course, you're like, yeah, that's awesome, you know, but it doesn't affect you. Like, it doesn't affect you in the way that it would if you didn't, if you weren't privy to this information. Let's put it that way. If you didn't have fears around it. Um, life scripts and audio. Um, so writing out your life script, literally like, I'm so happy and grateful now that I have the most wonderful relationship. I am earning six figures in my you know, um, cowboy hat making business online, <laughs> whatever it is, my coaching business in this business, I, that I'm earning, uh, multiple six figures as an vice or a president of a tech company, whatever it looks like. I have this house and I, you know, I drive this car and I'm going on these lavish vacations. You hear yourself when you start listening to your own, um, to your own self and the way that you speak, you actually start to change the neural pathways too. That's why speaking out loud and these spoken rants, you're actually hearing yourself. So your mind's like, oh, I'm listening, I'm listening. Um, but that starts to change the course of things too. Again, your thoughts change your feelings, your feelings create your actions. Meditation, meditating. It's a beautiful thing, a beautiful way to do it. Um, present moment manifesting, gratitude and celebration for present situation and things. Um, present moment manifesting is like, I'm so grateful for this book. I'm so grateful to be here on this podcast um, or in this course. I am so grateful for this microphone that I have this microphone in order to be able to speak to my audience. I'm so grateful for this bodysuit from nudes. <laughs> I'm so grateful for this necklace that I was gifted from a girl from love is blind. I am so grateful for the skincare and the makeup on my face. I'm so grateful. Gosh, I love my life. My life is so amazing. 
Next level manifestation, next level manifesting is submerging yourself in next level experiences before you're ready. That's what I was talking about a few minutes ago. Act like, act like who you want to become. You know, what was interesting. So I went through, I did a closet detox a month ago, month and a half ago. And I mean, I literally am looking at the bags in my guest bedroom right now because I'm like, I still haven't done anything with those. But what we did do was go through my clothes. I am wearing a pretty monochromatic look right now. This tank top bodysuit I got a year and a half, two years ago from Nudes. So it's not something new, new ish, I guess, but not new. Um, and there, I have not bought any new clothes since we went through. Like, literally, there are like 10 bags in my room. There's about 10% of the clothes that I used to have still hanging there. 90% are in bags in another room. I have not gone shopping. But I feel so much more elevated in the outfits that I have been putting together lately than I ever did. Because one, I invested in a, a woman, a stylist who showed me what could be more appropriate for me and showed me a little bit of like what I could use or that was already in my closet. Even pulling my hair back has made me feel more confident in myself. Anyways, all that to say, I submerged myself in a next level experience before I was ready. I didn't necessarily want to spend the money to invest in this stylist. But I was like, yeah, we're going to do it because those 90% of those clothes are going to stay in that closet for another two years if I don't do this. So I did. I, I thought from, well, if I had the money, if I, not to say this, I did have the money. But if I had more than enough money, then the money that I was investing in this wouldn't have felt so like to let it go. Again, I told you guys, I'm not like 100% perfect on this. I still have some qualms, but I made the decision from a next level version of myself. And how is it serving me? I feel more polished. I feel more confident. I feel more fucking empowered when I go to work every day. I feel so good. And what else? I'm speaking from a place, I'm showing up from a place of a next level version of myself too, because I feel good in what I'm wearing, because I've shifted my mindset around things. So if you want to be a badass CEO of a company, or you want to be an incredible stay-at-home mom, whatever it looks like, how are you, what are you going to do to become that person? So it many people say, uh, what is it? Um have, do, be. <laughs> Let's go there real quick. Have, do, be. Once you have the things, then you'll do the things to become the thing. Once you have something, like, well, once I have money, then I'll do this so that I can be this. That's a very, very backwards way of looking at it. That is lack and scarcity right there. So this next level manifesting is based on the concept of the be, do, have. I'm going to become the person and do the things from that place of being that person, and then I will have what I want. Be, do, have. Think about it. All right. I don't say questions and answers, but we don't have questions and answers. Um, <laughs> anyways, that is pretty much... Stop share. Okay, we're back. So that is pretty much it. We be, do, have. How do we seek yourself the millionaire mind? How do we become a rich dad? How do we become rich as fuck if we are staying stuck in the thought patterns that we grew up in, in the thought patterns of today. Because if, again, that zero to seven, zero to nine years old, you learned, you saw. I remember this was one of my, not to say necessarily limiting beliefs, because I've seen a lot of different um, proof of different things. However, um, the movie, I'm going to bring something and shed some light on y'all. The movie 101 Dalmatians, Cruella DeVille. What is she? She's rich. She's very wealthy. She's got her furs and a long little cigarette. And she's cruel. Cruella DeVille. She's cruel. So your subconscious mind could have, at that time of watching that movie, said rich people are cruel. People who have a lot of money are cruel, are evil, are bad. So if... Although I want a lot of money, I can't become that. I can't have that because then I will be mean. I will be cruel or people will think that I am cruel and that I mean. 
But there are so many, I'm telling you, there's proof all over the place. There are so many people that do really incredible things with money and they have a lot of money. They do mission trips. They do, you know, they build schools in underprivileged communities. They give back to the homeless. Like they do so many incredible things. So what, who do you, you have to rewrite your story. You just have to rewrite the story. Rewiring the subconscious mind. That's why this inner work is so important. Again, it's the, it's the mind and the body reprogramming in order to elevate into that next level version of yourself and create a life that you crave. And that is your process of goddess magic, okay? That is the magic of you stepping into this goddess. So my program, Goddess Magic, like I said, you will, so much of this is in there um, and so much more, <laughs> um, helping you to understand and shift your mindset around love, success, and money. And I welcome you and invite you into that program. Um, it's linked in the show notes of how to work with me. And I am really excited to know that you feel the pull and you feel called to jump into this work like I did. What was that? Six years ago? Because you deserve it. And you were so wildly worthy of being wildly wealthy. So thank you so much for tuning into today. I hope you loved this. And um, I hope I got your wheels spinning. Please share it. Please rate it, review it, all the things. Um, please tag me on social media as you go through it. Um, and, you know, share this episode on your social media. Tag me, Chase Love with Kelly, Chase Love with Kelly podcast. Um, and yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this. I love y'all. Have a great day. And yeah, till next time, be a goddess. Love y'all. Bye.